on to chapter 11, direct variation and inverse variation. Okay, so direct variation, both my x and my y increase or decrease at the same time. So what would be a good example to explain direct variation? Well, you know me and my chocolate, right? So the more chocolate I buy, the more weight I will probably gain if I don't do any exercising. Or I could say the more chocolate I buy, the more money I spend. Both are increasing. How about if I talk about both X and Y decreasing? Well, I could say uh, the less I study for algebra, the lower my grade will probably be. So that is also a direct variation because both X and Y are decreasing. Now, if you look at the equation here, it makes sense because they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. So if y is going to increase, k, let's talk about k, k is called the constant of variation. And what does constant mean? Constant means it stays the same. In this particular equation, k cannot equal zero because then we wouldn't have an x. So we call this the constant of variation. That's staying the same. That might be that I went to the dollar store and I spent a dollar for each of my candy bars, X being the number of candy bars I buy, K being the constant, they're a dollar a piece. Let's not talk tax. And Y would be, okay, if I buy more candy bars, they're still a dollar a piece, but if I'm buying more, I'm gonna be spending more money. We also call K the constant of proportionality because if I were to divide both sides by X, okay, I would have something that looks like this, Y over X is equal to K. So it's the constant of proportionality. If I have an equivalent ratio, it would also be equal to K, the constant of proportionality. Well, we've already done these. In fact, if you look at Y equals KX, what linear equation does that look like? It looks like Y equals MX plus B. And so we know that M and K are the same value. I'm just gonna sketch this. If I have y is equal to kx and k is greater than zero, it means that I have a positive slope and my line looks like that. If you notice, my k is equal to my slope. And if um, x is zero, then y would have to be zero as well because zero times k would be zero, so y would be zero. If I have a negative k, if k was equal, or I'm sorry, less than zero, and I had y is equal to kx, then my line would have a negative slope. Notice that both linear functions, both lines, do go through the origin. And that's part of the definition of a direct variation is that that graph will always go through the origin. An inverse variation is where the quantities of X and Y have opposite pro properties or inverse properties. What I mean by that is as one value increases, the other value decreases. If we look at this equation here, X, Y is equal to K, K is still the constant of variation. So they're still equal to the same number. So think about this, if X were to increase in value, in order for k to stay the same, y would have to decrease in value. 
So what might be a real world example for that? Well, a real world example might be the higher you go in altitude, the less oxygen or atmosphere there is around Earth. Or the more you play your video games and watch TV, the lower your grade might become. So that is an inverse variation. I like to talk to my aerospace students about Bernoulli's principle. And those of you with physics uh, or taking physical science might know about Bernoulli's principle, which says that as the volume of a fluid increases, the pressure decreases. And this is why we have lift on planes and explains tornadoes. The wind is spinning so quickly that the air pressure is so low, and that's why storms have low air pressure. So this is called an inverse variation. The graph of, the graph of an inverse variation is kind of a funky thing. It has a special name and that special name is a hyperbola. Okay, so I'm going to graph an inverse variation. I have y is equal to k over x, where k is positive. So if k is positive, let's go back and look at this equation again up here. If k is positive, what can you tell me about both x and y? If k is positive, then my x and y have to have the same sign. So my hyperbola arms are going to be in the first and third quadrant. In quadrant one, both x and y are positive. In quadrant three, both x and y are negative. Conversely, if I have an inverse variation, where k is negative, k is less than zero, the arms of my hyperbola are going to be in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant because in that quadrant, my x and my y are opposite signs.